Hey guys, welcome back to Foreign Reacts. Today we're going to be checking out a, a video titled 21 Things in the US That Puzzles Most Foreigners. I was wondering if I did this video already, but I could not find this video on my channel, so obviously I didn't do it. It's kind of weird because I do a lot of these related videos and it just makes me so triggered. Well, I don't, why am I using that word triggered? I don't get triggered. Stop copying people, boy. But this really makes me, you know, kind of curious because I'm like, did I do this already? But I didn't. So we're going to get right into this video. So go subscribe to the channel, guys. That's going to be telling what country I'll be moving to. And also, I must point out, um... Well, you may have lived in the United States your whole life without realizing that something totally normal for you seems bizarre to people from other parts of the world. Who knew that munching on fried pickles in a highly air-conditioned room was so outlandish? Well, here are some other highly entertaining Americanisms I've gathered. Let's count it down from number 21. Okay. Sales tax is a guessing game. When you go shopping in the U.S. and see a price tag that says $14.88, don't expect to pay $14.88 at the register. Sales tax is not included in the price of an item. And since this tax can vary from state to state, state, state yeah, yeah, yeah. figuring out your total can turn into the ultimate mental math challenge. Yeah, in many yeah. European countries, the sales tax is already included in the price. It's known as a value... But the thing about sales taxes in America, like who like what you got to understand is that he's not pointing this out but i'm going to point it out the person who lives in um <clears throat> let's say south carolina i'm going to just use south carolina north carolina florida um you're not going to be traveling those three states buying stuff bro like the likelihood of you if you were from south carolina you go to north carolina the likelihood of you buying something in north carolina like groceries is like almost non-existent it's like impossible why because you don't live there it's a state it's like a country and you get what i'm trying to say so it's really not that deep to be honest because you know how much your state charges so you just do the math it's not like you need to check with other states if you get what i'm trying to say because why would you do that at a tax or vat number 20 we're total workaholics a lot of Americans don't feel the need to take long vacations, so they often let vacation and sick hours pile up without ever using them. Plus, most employers only give you two weeks out of the year. But in a lot of other countries, like Brazil or Finland, workers are encouraged to take an average of 30 days of vacay. That's decent. Wow, maybe I should take some time off, or perhaps I'll just keep waiting. <laughs> 19. It's not a party without red solo cups. Oh, In the States, cops. this red plastic not cup cops, is cops, synonymous okay. with party on, dude. But other countries apparently don't recognize this cup to mean the same thing. People in the UK, for example, don't use red solo cups at get-togethers. They have to go to a special website to purchase the cups for american theme parties. Who knew? Number 18. That's Deep wild. fried everything. Whether it's fried pickles or even fried Oreos, Why would you do America that? has it all. Why would you do that? Fried fish recipes first appeared in Spanish and Portuguese cookbooks as far back as the 1200s, and the Greeks were frying food in olive oil way back in the 5th century BCE. But as America does with many things, they've adopted a tradition from far-off lands and took it up a notch. Or five. <laughs> 17. Get everything you need right at the at pharmacy. pharmacy. <laughs> if you're not from the U.S., it may be puzzling to walk into a pharmacy and see aisles and aisles of over-the-counter meds, toys, makeup, clothes, and even groceries. So about the Unlike alcohol. in other countries where pharmacies sell medicine and medical supplies exclusively, the ones in the U.S. are like small convenience stores right. where you can grab magazines, Tylenol, and a frozen pizza in one fell swoop. 16. Fill her up. In America, if a restaurant doesn't offer free refills on fountain drinks, it's kind of strange. But in other countries, once you buy one beverage, that's it. France banned refills on sugary sodas back in 2017 in order to combat the current obesity epidemic. But in the U.S., the idea of free refills is still alive and well. 15. If you don't like it, return it. 
Whether it's an ugly sweater from grandma or a heinous pair of earrings from an ex, if you don't like it, you can just return it. In America, making returns at stores is pretty normal and super easy. I mean, the U.S. even has a National Returns Day in January, conveniently held for you to return holiday gifts you weren't too thrilled about. <laughs> 14. Tips for everyone. <laughs> Cat drivers, tips. servers, hairdressers, you gotta tip them. Tips are acceptable for almost any service in the U.S. and sometimes consist of 25% of the bill. We haven't started tipping surgeons yet, but there are places in other parts of the world. Nah, some people just cannot be tipped. Like, no, no. Why would you even tip somebody who's nah? Such as Japan, that consider tipping incredibly rude, like in restaurants. When you travel to different countries, it's important to learn their tipping etiquette so that you don't offend anyone. 13. I'll take my coffee to go. With a Starbucks on every corner, it's very normal to see people toting around a coffee as they shop, commute to work, and whatever else at all times of the day. But in many parts of the world, coffee is meant to be sipped on while seated and enjoying the paper or chatting with friends. Tugging your coffee along with you throughout the day might be due to the fact that the cups are huge and take longer to drink. Who's got that kind of time to be sitting in a cafe for hours? Sounds like fun to me. Number I personally prefer to be drinking a European coffee. I don't drink coffee at all anymore though, but I'd personally rather to be drinking a European coffee that is so small compared to American coffee. Like I was like literally addicted to coffee. It messed me up really bad, couldn't sleep. And then when I got off it, uh, I could not stay awake. Yeah, I would never advise anyone to drink coffee ever. 12, the land of ice cold drinks. Now, speaking of there. drinks, if it's not a hot coffee or cocoa, then it's probably got ice in it. Tea, coffee, lemonade, soda, water. Americans like it on the rocks. If you go elsewhere in the world, odds are you'll be sipping your soda at room temperature, or maybe slightly refrigerated, if you don't specifically ask for ice. Number 11. Keeping the AC on at all times. Right. Americans must have an aversion to being hot. In many parts of Europe, people simply don't use air conditioning as much as they do in the States. Here, it's expected to always have the AC blaring, and a lot of visitors find it pretty strange and quite chilly. <laughs> Come on, it makes sense. If you're cold, you can layer up. If you're hot, all you can do is suffer and complain about it. Bro, put that thing on 60 right now. Put it on 60. <laughs> put that thing on 60. Hey man, I'm telling you, that's what I do. Put it on 60, close the windows, close the curtains, the blinds, whatever you want to call it. And we in the dark with some small LED lights and we good. <laughs> Number 10. Looking at dollars is a snooze fest. I remember going to Europe for the first time and thinking their banknotes look like Monopoly money. And I guess a lot of countries have bills of different colors and sizes depending on the value, like Swedish krona and Russian rubles. But not in the U.S. It's all greenbacks, baby. Sure, tens look a little yellowy, fifties are kind of pinkish, and Benjamins seem bluer than the others. But still, U.S. Nah, dollars Benji, definitely Benji, aren't as Benji, nah, Benji Ben, nah, come on, man. Benji Ben like that, bro. That's a new Benji right there, bro. Like, you got the old school Benjis, bro, that be green, green, green like the dollar bill. But you got the new Benji that be blue now. You know, you, you get we get what I'm trying to say. And rainbowy as other currencies. Number nine, giving a thumbs up. In America, even little kids know a thumbs up means good job, way to go, well, or anything that positive that. like that. But if you travel to Greece or the Middle East and give this common American gesture, you probably won't make too many friends. Oh, hey, man. how about giving this video a thumbs up for the useful tip? <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, the date writing conundrum. Oh. So many visitors to the U.S. get really confused by the month day year thing because most parts That's of the world me. write the day, <laughs> then the month, then finally the year. There's no clear historical reason why the U.S. insists on writing the day differently, but we just do. Number seven, pre-baby baby showers. Many cultures celebrate a new baby coming into the world, 
But America is one of the few places that does this before the baby actually gets here. In East Asian countries, for instance, celebrations for a new baby are held once the baby is born, as doing otherwise is seen as bad luck. Number 6. Where how are you means hello. Sure, people ask each other how they're doing in other countries. But Americans often use this phrase as a replacement for hey or hello. It doesn't even require a real response. Yeah. People just answer with fine thanks. But what I he will advise you guys to do, don't take it, don't take it like how this man's giving it. He's giving you facts, but there are some people in America who are extremely friendly and they're literally waiting for you to say, I'm good. How are you? So my advice to anyone is that if you visit America and somebody says, How are you? You ain't gotta chop it up and get into details. Keep it small. Just reply. I'm good, how are you? They respond, they don't respond, whatever. But to be safe so you don't hurt somebody's you know, feelings, because I've done it before and I know that people get hurt sometimes because I'm just moving about my business and I'm just like, they like, how are you? And I'm like, yeah, good morning. And I just do my business and I'm out, right? But sometimes you look at somebody's face and they're like, dang, this dude didn't even wanna talk to me. You know what I'm trying to say? So just keep that in mind where you just, you know, you give a little, I'm good, how are you type stuff. It doesn't hurt you to not hurt somebody's feelings, if you know what I'm trying to say. Even if they're in a horrible mood or had a terrible day. <clears throat> Number five, bathroom stalls that aren't so private. Hmm, don't it's like doing safety, your business bro. in front of complete strangers? Americans don't either, of course. But the fact that bathroom stall safety. doors often reveal as much as your entire lower leg seems to say otherwise. There's no clear reason as to why there's this big gap Dude, in public bathrooms. First of all, it's for safety and um, so you, you know who's in a bathroom. That's it. Ain't nothing else to it. Safety and to know that somebody's in a bathroom. Because people don't got beat up in bathrooms, bro. From stalls here. But many guess it's for safety reasons. Exactly. Or ventilation. <laughs> Just saying. Ventilation with the Number big four. Ass. Come on, man. No one uses their inside voice. A lot of my friends who are visiting or moved to the U.S. tell me that locals speak so loud compared to other countries. <laughs> Whether it's talking on your cell phone or chatting with a friend over lunch, Americans seem to really like projecting their voice. Project your voice. Maybe we just want to make sure we're heard. <laughs> Number three. It's all about choices. Walk into any grocery store aisle and you'll notice at least 10 different options for cookies, crackers, or cereal. People in the UK don't have these many options for food, and you'll almost never find anything in grape flavor there. Number two, hopping into the back seat of a cab. When getting into a cab, it's customary in the States to scoot on into the back seat. But in countries like New Zealand and Australia, riding anywhere but shotgun can be a little rude. Number one, wow. that classic American smile. In the US, people aren't afraid to be nice and show their pearly whites all the time. And according to a 2015 study at Brown University, because America has always been a very diverse country, it forced people to smile at each other more since they couldn't always communicate with language. <laughs> That's just one more historical theory as to why Americans tend to smile more than people in other places do. Or maybe we're just, you know, friendlier. Whether you're from the U.S. or not, can you add any more strange Americanisms to the list? Let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like, share it with a friend, and here are some more cool videos to check out. My personal American thing is <laughs> ignorance, dog. <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> Tell me about ignorance. <laughs> yeah, ignorance is really a, an American thing. Real ignorant, like I'm telling you, man, ignorance. Victim of it many times. But either ways, guys, I'm out of here, man. Until next time, peace.